Hey, good evening. It's December 18th, Sabine here. This is the article I just published, Sparkling Jewels at the Midnight Hour. And before this video summary, I've already recorded the audio version. So that will be in the description box in addition to the article itself. So here we see a veiled, a portion of a veiled bride in an ancient depiction of a comet and its fiery debris tail. We're nearing the, the year's darkest and shortest days, known as the spiritual midnight hour, as the sun, our heavenly bridegroom, ends the heavenly circuit in the archer in Sagittarius. On December 21st, the winter solstice, where the sun visually stands still for three days. In the Archer constellation, forerunner Mercury and the beloved Venus continue to pave the way before the sun as evening stars. This week they mark out the Lord's heavenly arrows sharpened, stretched forth at the Archer's right arm, the brightest star, Numki. Mercury is positioned in the cloaked quiver, and we know that the Arrows are the children of the Lord. That's referenced in the Old Testament. We can see the veiled moon bride also approaching the bridegroom. Steadily in Virgo, then the altar of redemption Libra, then Scorpio in her overcoming phase, awaiting the reunion with the sun, December 23rd. Mindful of the second temple's cornerstone, having been laid and the light of the world, Jesus himself coming down, from heaven to indwell Mary's temple, the conception of Jesus, Kislev 24. We can see the past affirmations of Haggai's prophetic instruction to consider this day diligently. He mentions it twice. Jesus' birth, 9-11-3 BC, Mary gave birth to him, the sinless lamb, in the tower of the flock, the Migdal Tower, where the name Mary Magdalene is derived from where the priestly sacrificial lambs were tended to. One year and three months later, the Magi or the Parthian kings from the east found the Lord as a toddler, not a babe, in the subsequent year on what would become the first Christmas celebration. Of course, not the distorted version, which the Catholic Church has introduced, but the gift giving by the Parthian kings to the newborn king marked in time and place at the time by the king planet jupiter abiding above the young child's house december 25th 2 bc like these pilgrims of old we may like likewise rejoice in knowing that while the world is darkening both physically and spiritually and the en enemy has attempted a hundred times over to cover up the joyful prophetic promises of the December month with all kinds of distortions. The Kislev month, the Christmas season, is still about the Lord. He is coming as the light of the world at the time of, the, of his conception and then the first gift giving by the Magi from the East. His kingdom manifesting within his faithful remnant, watching, waiting prayerfully, and pursuing him wholeheartedly. And if you're unfamiliar with the study of the scriptures and the celestial signs pertaining to his birth and the heavenly alignments and the signs which the Magi saw along the way as they moved from the kingdom of the east toward Jerusalem, um, you can do, you can read that over here. And by the way, December 25th is another very interesting marker because remember that Herod um, had inquired where they would, uh, had inquired of them to report back to him where they had found the Lord. And the angel warned them to go back another way because a snare was laid up for them. So the concept of a snare being laid up for those who heed the official narrative by the official uh, government at the time, which was counter uh, Christ, counter God, counter faith, I uh, believe is an interesting and an important marker for us. Psalm 19 speaks 
of the sun ending its heavenly circuit. The sun as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And is, there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So the Lord as a bridegroom makes an analemma, an H shape in the heavens. And the most southern point of that H shape trajectory um, is the winter solstice. Interestingly, the same logo used by FIVA has that same marker. And the World Cup actually looks like a meteor with a debris tail. So here is a really concise overview of the coming week. You can find all the scriptural references, the celestial references, all in one place. So the heavenly decorations for the coming week. Here we have asteroid Ceres in Virgo, another type of the heavenly Jerusalem. The moon aligning today with Spica, the first fruits, Zedek, or the branch, and then aligning with Arcturus, the brightest star in the constellation, Budis, the herdsman, as well. Budis, the harvester or herdsman, has a sharp sickle in his left hand and a staff in his right. So the alignment of the moon, the, the moon, Spica, and Arcturus today is a foreshadowing of the harvest ready to start. And then, of course, the moon will traverse to the position it had at the time of the Lord's birth and at Revelation 12 sign, entering into the four-cornered altar of redemption, Libra, now known as the scales, then the claws of Scorpio, and then overcoming the uh, tail stars of Scorpion, to then conjoin with the sun, December 23rd, in the Archer. But beforehand, the comet K2 Panstar C2017 is going to be at perihelion tomorrow. So the trajectory of this particular comet is drawn out over here. And here we have that momentum of perihelion. We covered last time how that comet was in the judgment constellation Ara, the judgment altar, and has now entered into Pavo the Peacock. And I believe that is going to speak to us of a great shaking coming, all eyes aligning, and then a loud cry. So the perihelium momentum of K2 is when it will either prove to be steadfast and remaining intact and on course, or it can actually also um, be broken up because of the nearness uh, to the sun. So let's wait and see what tomorrow brings. But a little bit further in the article, I'm going to explain the prophetic meaning of the peacock constellation. So the sun is traversing the Milky Way, the fiery river in the area, which is known as the Celestial Golden Gate. Both Venus and Mercury are paving the way, uh, the same root word actually as Pavo, the peacock, um, on the ecliptic. Venus is aligning with the brightest star, Numki in Sagittarius, and Mercury is a little bit further ahead under the cloak where the quiver of the archer is held. Underneath our, the archer we see Corona Australis, the uh, southern crown, that is the crown which is bestowed to believers at the end of the race. So this area, the celestial, uh, celestial golden gate, is where the sun ends its yearly circuit in the heavens. This is where Comet K2 Pen Stars is right below the horizon. It has just departed from the Ara constellation, entering into Pavo, the peacock. The moon aligning with Comet 81P Wild uh, tomorrow. And the sun will enter into the constellation of the Archer. Venus aligning with Nunki, the brightest star in Sagittarius. 
and Mercury underneath the cloak section of the archer. Above uh, this beautiful alignment, of course, we have a couple of meteor showers, which are like flashlights the Lord is uh, shining forth for us to, to grab our attention. The Leonid Minorid meteor showers, the little lion, that was also a topic, remember, in the movie Melancholia, the little Leo. So in that movie, we saw the coming together of the moon and Mars, the bride and Michael, preceding the uh, center stage of that little boy. Uh, so we have the moon and Mars coming together, then the Gemini meteor shower, the wedding, and then we had that little Leo referring to this uh, meteor shower. Little Leo, Leo Minor, sleeping together with two bears, a big one, Ursa Major, and a small one, Ursa Minor. And an Ursa Minor is currently a meteor shower as well. So that is the small sheepfold or the little flock. That is the bridal company, which is completely encompassed by Draco, the dragon. The moon at the altar of redemption, Libra. Mercury is distance. Uh, to its, magna, uh, to its maximum from the sun in the eastern direction. And on December 23rd, it will actually be at its brightest. So the Lord is making sure that we are looking to the forerunner. So we have, in this week's celestial signs, we have a midnight marker of spiritual midnight, the winter solstice. We have a potential loud cry signaled by the comet we have the forerunner rising to its highest point and we have prophecies with regard to a great shaking coming before the desired sun uh, comes and of course the onset of judgment and the lord's instruction to hide in our chambers for the overpassing indignation so the scriptures are in harmony with what we see in the heavens. The December solstice, the sun visually resting or standing still in the celestial golden gate. The Ursa meteor shower, the little flock, the bridal flock, completely encompassed by the dragon. We have his full attention, but so does he have ours. So we are here to take spiritual authority over what he is doing. The moon at perihelion, closest to the sun, December 23rd. Then Mercury rises to its highest altitude in the evening sky. The new moon, the Echad phase of the sun and the moon coming together in the constellation Sagittarius. The conjunction of the moon and Mercury subsequently. Mercury at dichotomy, meaning its half phase. So we see a division of the forerunner and the moon at perigee meaning closest to the earth so the moon will appear larger than normal and then of course uh, before the conjunction with mercury the moon will also conjoin with venus and as we shared in the previous video the aquila comet as a crown jewel, Comet C 2022 E3, aligning with the Northern Crown's main asterism boundaries from December 15th to 30th. That is the semicircle next to the constellation Booties, the harvester we just saw. The Lord is reminding us to hold on tightly to our, our crowns through the scriptures, the spirit, but especially through the heavens. Revelation 3.11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man or woman take thy crown. Revelation 5.10, And thou hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. The same promise and uh, provision made to Philadelphia. Ezekiel 16.12, And I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Malachi 3, 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son. 
that serveth him.